out their, their squishy carries before Ramos taunts them, power balls them, drops the, the ground tremor for all that extra damage. Um, on our blue team, blue team is going to be uh, T, uh, Floor is Lava, correct? And uh, they are led by Kablamo here, who's going to be playing on that Jarvan. Uh, Jack Fremont is going to be on Lulu. Boss Boy is going to be on Eskar Gragas. Black Paladin on Heimerdinger. Noobzilla on Wukong. And what do we have for the purple team here? Um, I'm God is on Annie again. Black Dalio is playing Bramus. Earth Dead playing Vane. Eonico on Swain. And Noob V3 playing Ribbon. And once again, guys, this is Dominate Dominion number 44. We are into the final eight teams now. Um, these guys are playing for the semifinals right now. If you love Dominate Dominion, then you'll love Dominate TT. Check out Dominate TT at DominateTT.com. And it's going to be a Twisted Tree Line tur tournament in the very same format that you've already come to know and love here on Dominion. First tournament is starting on March 16th. And we're going to jump right into this game as I'm speaking. It looks like we are going to see that Gragas bot. You are right versus the Riven. Uh, pretty good call there. It looks like Earth Dead's sitting around bottom, but I think you're right. It's going to be the Riven versus the Gragas. And I think Riven's going to have the uh, the trouble here versus the Gragas. You know, she can't close the gap unless Gragas is silly enough to waste his, uh, his belly bump there and go into the fight, which I don't think we'll see. Uh, yes, I think it will be a neutral lane with Riven shielding and sustaining off Gragas' harass, although she might have trouble with that early and Gragas just kiting and wave clearing. Yeah, Gragas' early game is very strong. Um, the, the main strength hits at about level 4. Uh, once he gets his Drunken Rage, uh, as you can see up on stream here, reduces damage by 10% for 20 seconds. That is a crazy amount of damage reduction, and it reduces all damage. So it makes him fairly durable. He went with the Prospector's Ring, so he has that extra HP, the mana regen. He's got uh, one health pot instead of two, which is interesting. I think you can afford two with the Prospector's Ring, um, but it actually you're going to switch it up. It's going to be Black Paladin going down bottom on Heimerdinger instead of the Gragas. Maybe they wanted a little bit additional uh, ranged poke up top with those champagne bottles. I feel um, that Heimerdinger would provide more range poke, but Gragas' attack speed slow will help against Vayne. Oh, Jack Fremont getting condemned right in the wall here. Lulu being the first target, but Earth Dead running back through the barrel there, taking a lot of damage. The Ignite's going down, nobody dying yet, and Aniko is in a lot of trouble. Ignite coming down on him as well. Jarvan picking up that kill. Annie jumping on Boss Boy, but unable to get the kill. I am God now trying to retreat, and Ramus unable to do much right now. Wukong getting that kill. Earth Dead getting taken very low, but another Dragon Strike. Decided to turn around for a second. A good Condemn to the wall, but here comes the Revives coming out. A taunt onto Kablamo. They did grab the tower while all this was happening, though. Kablamo is going to get out alive. Wukong is going to deceive and try to kill Earth Dead. Does he have one more auto attack? No, he does not. The stuns from Annie coming out. Vayne actually walking back saying, I want this kill. I've been kiting this guy forever. More revives coming out from the blue team here just to ensure the fact that they're going to keep this turret right here. Glitter Lances slowing them down, kiting them around. They do have Gragas there, waiting for someone to channel. Dropping in the barrels. Good damage coming out from those barrels, but Jack Fremont taking a lot of CC. But here comes Gragas with the belly first. Going to get taunted there, but I am God in a lot of trouble as Kablamo comes in to take him out. And now the Ramas, once again, not able to help his team capitalize on kills. The taunt is just not there when the damage is there. I expect from... I think Ramas is rushing a sweeper now, which will help shut down Wukong. Yeah, Lulu is. is building remarkably offensive right now. I wonder how that will go. Yeah, she didn't go with any um, any more durability items. I expect to see like the cooldown reduction onto a Lulu to have more Glitter Lances, not stronger Glitter Lances. Their base damage is really strong already. Down bottom, the ult coming up from Nubi 3, but Boss Boy coming down, trying to get a gank. A great explosive cast there. Should be an easy kill on Noob V3. The slow is down, the tower hit. Going to help out with that grenade. Black Dahlia way too late. P 
powerballing in, now just trying to get away as the chase is on. Boss Boy lands the belly bump slow, a powerball getting stopped mid powerball, but I don't know if they can capitalize on this kill. He's going to be able to get the HP relic, and he's going to have help from the revive ribbon coming down here. Meanwhile, up top, just a poke fest. They're really not, they're just kind of pushed the wave here. They're not actually committing onto a fight, even though they know Ramus isn't there. And there it is, the Cataclysm, the Wild Growth, the Cyclone coming out, and the red team coming out very strong there because Vayne was untouched. They focused on the Annie, who has even more armor and MR than the, than the Vayne does, and very easy kills for them as their CC lined up much better. The ultimate's not working very well on the um, on the blue team there. The Jarvan Cataclysm and the Wukong knockup, they really didn't lock down the Vayne. And then Black Dalio, look at, this, look at his Ramas. All he's doing is running around in circles, keeping two members there. They grabbed the relic, I mean, they grabbed the point up top of the windmill, and now he's going to just be able to powerball right into Gragas, dropping a taunt, and that is going to be the end of Gragas. See if he can grab the kill on Black Dalio. Yes, he does. A great barrel there. He's going to be get out. He's going to be able to get out. And now they're just caught in their jungle. This is very bad for the red team. Riven has come up now, but unfortunately Heimerdinger is recalling. Gragas noticed this and decided to back cap. Yeah, a smart move there. Really good map awareness, knowing that if Riven comes up, he's going to be able to have a chance to back cap. He's got a little bit more minions right now to work with. Um, than the Riven, and he's probably going to try to just push this lane a little bit and then back in the bush. Meanwhile, Lulu taking the point uncontested up top. I think that's a little fluke, all of Red going back after they capped that and not leaving at least one person to try to defend with that tower up. She's not going to be able to stop them recapping it, though. And she's going to die trying. <laughs> yeah, Lulu caught out um, once again, being an early focus for them, and she does have a health crystal now. She might go right for that, um, Leandre's Torment. Uh, the ultimate coming out from Gragas there, jumping in on the vein, not able to get the damage to kill her though. The ignite coming down on her. Lulu gonna chase with a glitter lance. As Gragas dies, they did get the vein down. Now their damage is reduced quite a bit. They kind of doubled up the ultimates there. Black Dalio, the next. Uh, target there. Noobzilla gonna go down to the Swain AoE. Kablamo trying to get the kill here, but a double kill coming out for Swain. And Jack Fremont, he has neutralized the tower, and they are going to push them away here. Dragas a little bit too strong right now. I'm God trying to delay a little bit longer as Veins come up with her revive. A great condemn into the wall. That is the end of Gragas, trading for the Annie, and now Jack Fremont is the next target. You can't run away from the vein. Land that good lance. No, the slow coming down, and a double kill coming out for Vayne. And like we said earlier, she's been very slippery. Even when she died right there, she had to revive up because that was the first time that she has died this game, and she's 4-1-5. and five. It's really interesting to see um, the Heimerdinger now actually doing a good job pushing down bottom. Do you think Riven can stop that push if he jumps in on here? I think so, yes, she's about to clear it now, and she might kill Heimerdinger if she does it right. Oh no, the three man kind of put <laughs> an end to that. Down there, put a stop to that. Defensive Garrison from Black Dahlia there. Noobzilla is not able to get away with the decoy. Gonna try to jump in and do some damage. Not able to juke. Thought about it for half a second and realized that Annie's just gonna be killing me whether I juke or not. And now the red team... She's picked up a out. sweeper, in fact. Yes, that's true. And he has picked up the sweeper, dropped it onto the Heimerdinger before Heimer got into the bush. They're going to get onto this current. A defensive garrison coming out from Heimerdinger. Vayne chasing down as I'm God caps this even with the garrison up. Vayne unable to get that last auto attack. Dies to the fountain for the kill. Not worth <laughs> it out there. Um, I'm God barely living versus the minions there. It was actually worth it because um, blue team had more points at the time so would have had ha longer respawn oh, they man, manages to pack, pick up Ramus's respawn wave I feel like if she had gone back with how much HP she had they could have capped that bottom point though and defended it 
Like with an extra That's person true, there, yes. I think they would have been able to cap it and defend it. It was the quest objective too, so they would have gotten that at the same time. But she really wanted that kill on the Heimerdinger. Yes. Ramus has decided to rush a Thornmail, which is fair enough. Um, he'll be practically unkillable for this team now. There's the double ult coming in on Mozilla again, but they're not focusing on Vayne. She popped one tumble into the bush. She has condemned back up. She's going to take out Boss Boy right here. No! She changed targets before she killed Boss Boy. Now Boss Boy stuck in between a rock and a hard place. Will get shut down there. Vayne doing really good work. She tumbled into the bush after they double, they used double knockups on her. The Wild Growth and a Cyclone. They didn't even try to kill her after she tumbled in the bush. They thought she was already dead when they didn't actually lay damage onto her. Riven now jumping right onto Black Paladin. A great grenade there, stunning noob V3, and Black Paladin coming out in that trade very far ahead. Riven's wave clear is amazing right now, and she's sufficiently threatening to Heimerdinger that she was allowed to leave that lane and then cleared the wave without issue. Here comes the gank up behind. Black Dahlia dropping the taunt on there, grabbing the health relic so that Heimerdinger doesn't have a chance. The assist will go out, and there it is, a tumble through the Cataclysm wall. I don't know if you saw that, but I saw that, and I didn't even know that was possible. So Vayne living long enough to do some damage there. A great AoE stun coming from Annie here. The double kill coming out. Swain being so durable. Wukong unable to do anything against that. And I did not think you could tumble through a Cataclysm wall. You can. You can't condemn against it, though. Yes, that's true. You can't condemn against it. It will actually just knock people... It knocks them up to it, but does not stun them, correct? It doesn't actually knock them through it, I don't believe. And now Red Team really that showing... That turret placement here. was very nice. It kept Ramus away. Yes. The turret, dropping a turret to stop the power ball. I don't remember rewards used to be able to do that. But the fight ensuing here. Wild Growth saving Black Paladin's life. He's actually going to stay around. Wukong dropping the Cyclone. A triple kill coming out for Wukong. And finally, a really solid ult as I think they kind of they kind of overextended there. I don't feel like they needed the fourth point. They had already neutralized it. And they should have just kind of backed off and disengaged against that. Um, now they're actually worried their top point here taking a good amount of damage. Wukong trying to decoy out of there. And Annie, the damage over the wall, just bursting down that Wukong as Lulu goes into full retreat mode as fast as she can. Meanwhile, it's a 2v1 down bottom. Oh, Zoss coming down. Heimer in a lot of trouble here. The Wooglet's coming out. They're just kind of standing around. The points been neutralized. Here comes J4, though, dropping him down, dropping her down very quickly and going to chase Riven away. Riven might just disengage this one, go back, and make sure that she's not going to die and lose the Boneyard in exchange to slow that turret. No, she did not go back. She keeps playing around. Noob V3, trolling a little bit there. Ramos is coming down to help out. Um, Boss Boy trying with a 1v1 against the Swain, but Annie and Ramos are there to help out. Ramos not even needed because Tibbers came down, and the fireworks on that Tibbers is just a little too strong. J4 jumping onto Annie, not doing much damage, a taunt going down. The Wild Growth coming out onto J4, kind of a waste because I don't think he's going to be able to make it out anyways, unless the Wukong has something to say about it. And it was actually enough to just make them disengage there. The Storm Shield on Annie makes her yes. look like a beast right now. Purple's jungle control is extremely problematic right now. They're bushwhacking blue as they head out of spawn. Yeah, they're they're locking them down to the two points, which is I think what they needed to do earlier. Not go for the go for the fourth cap. Um, just lock them down with the two points and wait for them to overcommit like right here. Here comes the fight. The cyclone is down. The cataclysm finally good on Vayne, but he's all alone, focusing on Annie there. Vayne almost untouched with a double kill. Lulu picking up the Annie in the middle there, but Vayne once again just decimating their team, getting a triple kill. It was a four for two right there that they don't have revives up. They're going to grab this neutral here. They might, even with the minions' help, grab the full cap, making it four to one as Heimerdinger and Riven go at it one more time down bottom. Riven's AoE is devastating. It's just clearing Heimer's turrets as they come down. Yeah, the Riven definitely outscales 
Heimer. Um, if Heimer's not using just like the rocket kiting techniques, once Heimer's grenades down, Riven has easy prey onto that little fro-bound Yordle. So that's Swain caught. And Swain getting caught out there. And then and the... Here comes the And health. then they're probably... The wild growth dropping yes. down. Vayne dropping Condemn in there. Three attacks. Half of that J4's health. Jack Frost being caught. Uh, Gragas trying to disengage and hopefully be able to defend here. But they're not going to go for the refinery. They're going to go and bushwhack one more time. Newzilla walking straight into it. Drops a Cyclone. Too little too late. Almost a waste of an ult there. Barely slowing them down. And Heimer's left. 1v2 with barely any turret to work with here. He's going to drop out the ultimate. I'm God and him trading stuns. Wooglet's going out. He does have backup though. A good barrel going down. Didn't pop the barrel. Still got the kill. The uh, shutdown actually. Black Paladin catching the vein there as she took a few turret hits. Got a little too low. And now Red needs to be on the retreat a little bit um, as the blue is pushing really hard on the bone yard. It's going to be an easy cap for blue. I would have liked to see Riven jump in there. He has, she has revive up. There it is, the jump on a black paladin. They didn't get the cap yet. Vayne staying alive long enough. And oh, the vision coming out from Noob V3. He should be able to close the gap here. Jarvan has another four seconds on standard. There's the stun, there's the auto attack. And another kill coming out for Noob V3 as they push their lead ahead at about 240 points right now. Um, sorry, 280 points. Um, my, my at a glance. 180 back. points. 180 points. It is absolutely terrible right now. Yes. I feel that the Lulu is being very squishy at the moment, and this is meaning that she can't position that she would need to to support without dying. Yeah, that's true. The 1v1 coming out from Annie and Gragas, not enough. Um, coming out of Gragas as Tibbers was up. She had Storm Shield, and it was a really easy 1v1 kill. They came in to help out there. Um, but meanwhile, down bottom, Black Paladin in a little bit of trouble. Jack Frost being focused. The Polymorph coming down, but an easy kill here. See if Vayne can get this last auto attack. There it is. Now they're going to get on to Black Paladin. See if they can get the kill here. The ultimate coming out, but not going to be enough. Only stunning one there. A couple more auto attacks. Vayne should be able to take this kill. And <laughs> Wooglet's coming out, delaying the inevitable and allowing Riven to pick up the kill instead of Vayne. They're not going to be able to contest that bottom point. And Swain is delaying any attempts at reinforcement. Yeah, Swain, look at that tanky build actually going Chalice, Spirit Massage there. Um, four people down bottom for red. Lulu, once again, in between a, a power ball, a heart seeker who is just devastating their team, a battle bunny, and then Swain, just to add insult to injury. They have another quest objective. Yes. I don't think they're going to be able to come back. They're going to be able to take a five cap, folks, that we're going to see as soon as this refinery caps. There it is, and that'll be the quick end of the game here as... Um, yes. Is it Team Solo Bot really showed some dominance here? Yes, I feel that after about 15 minutes on the clock, there was really very little blue team could do. Um, Purple's team scaling was simply ridiculous, and Vayne had way too much stuff. Yeah, Vayne was able to pick up a lot of early kills, and... That just made her a force to be reckoned with later on. She had a Frozen Mallet, the Ionic Spark, and a Sanguine Blade, and that's all she needed. I don't even think at endgame build she'd need any more, but she'd get even stronger if the game lasted a little bit longer. Um, best score in the game going to Vayne right there, 14, 7, and 18. And I think it's just a hard CC. They didn't have the hard CC to lock down that AD carry and stomp her out to make it a 4v5 or even trade a one-for-one one trade for that ADC. So she was able to just continually lay down damage as the CC of red team kind of took him out there.